crazy cephalopoda. We're trying a new game. I think it's out in beta, alpha, some kind of letter, <laughs> called Ecosystem. And I'm really excited. I was looking at the description of this one for a long time, and I really wanted to play. So I guess the setup to the game is that you are the person who gets to design and create an ecosystem, which is the place or habitat that animals and organisms live. And apparently, based on the parameters of how you set your ecosystem, it will generate creatures that can like naturally adapt to that environment. So it's a cool way of like demonstrating natural selection and evolution. And I'm just super excited to play it. So I don't know what the difference is between new and creative. We'll go with new. You get to first pick which kind of environment you want. I clicked to learn like the tutorial, but we're gonna go through the tutorial again because uh, <laughs> I did not get through it. I tried the reef. There's like, if you click on it, it will, it shows you kind of like what the terrain's gonna look like. That's strange. This one is trench, lagoon. Let's do lagoon. So then you have base, sediment, stain, cliffside, and water. And I'm just gonna be quite frank that I don't necessarily understand how changing these parameters does anything you can choose a different base like we'll make the base sand here dark sand i don't know maybe we should do something different all right so you get to like start your environment let's just click okay and kind of get into it see what happens it says, ecosystem is a game about life. At its heart are evolving virtual organisms who grow from synthetic DNA and live in a physically simulated ocean. The fittest pass on their genes to their offspring, so over time, the world you create will be filled with unique creatures adapted to it. So pause here for a second to point out this phrase here, the fittest are the ones who pass on their genes. I know people always say that little phrase, uh, survival of the fittest. But when it comes to natural selection or how organisms adapt over time, fittest doesn't mean like the buffest, beefiest organism, right? You don't need the most muscle to survive. It means like the organism whose traits best fit that environment. So keep that in mind as we go. Let's just click begin tutorial. Okay, you can move the camera horizontally using the keys. Okay. Keep in mind, I'm just gonna point out here that this is actually my first time using this computer. Um, I did get a new computer set up, and therefore I'm trying to like having to learn how to use the keyboard, and it's very difficult for me. <laughs> All right. Yep, yeah, we got it. What's next? You can warp to a location by clicking on the mini map. Oh. Okay, that's a big map, right? It even shows you like where you're looking on the little mini map too. We've started you with a barren landscape, but soon it will become a thriving habitat. The first step is to seed the plants and sessile organisms that will form the base of your food chain. Open the food source menu. Sessile means uh, like non-moving, so maybe things like corals and sponges, things that like attach to a substrate or like the bottom, they don't go anywhere. So we get to choose three food sources. These are all different types of plants. Milfoil is a rooted plant found naturally in lakes and rivers. It reproduces through vegetative propagation. That's kind of like where a piece of the plant comes off and then that fragment or piece becomes a whole new plant. It says exactly that now that I read it. I'm sorry for being repetitive. While some species provide important shelter for sea life, others are highly invasive, killing local plant life. I don't want that one. This one, the java fern, is native to rivers across the world. It's an easygoing plant that can handle a variety of conditions. It's an epiphyte, attaching itself to hard surfaces like rocks or wood and pulling nutrients from the water through its leaves rather than through roots. I kind of like that one. A lot of macrophytes or hydrophytes, plants that are like adapted to water, are really strange. Um, they don't always necessarily have roots because they actually don't have a cuticle um, like on their cell walls and water can just diffuse directly through their cells. There are some that do have roots but they tend to be kind of tiny. 
So like in a wetland, the plants that float on the top might have little tiny roots so that if the water drops during like a dry season, they can like actually burrow into the wetland, which is cool. Grass whack, pond weed, it wraps around the stem, it occurs on all continents, it attracts epiphytes and zooplankton. Yeah. Don't even know how to say that one. Anubius, hailing from tropical parts. It's a slow growing but hardy plant that can survive even souring substrates. It's fondness for the dark spaces of the world gave it its name. Why not? Cool. We've done something. Oh, now we can plant it. In order for a plant or sessile organism to grow in a location, the ecosystem health there needs to meet its minimum requirement. Some pioneer species have no requirement and can grow anywhere. Select one of these and click once to seed it. Okay, so we can like plant it around the map. Ooh, look, it kind of is like taking off on its own. And this thing over here says ecosystem health. I don't know what that means. Insufficient life points. I think these things are the life points. This little number by the fish up here. I don't know what these numbers mean. What does that mean? It says five. Five what? Five. Ooh, look, it's kind of like taken off. This says ecosystem health four. Stop. When a plant or sessile organism grows somewhere, it improves the ecosystem health nearby by an amount depending on its neighboring environment, plants, and animals. In this way, plants and sessile organisms shift their environment in predictable ways that change or that other plants and organisms can take advantage of. Okay. So we're just kind of like creating the base of this ecosystem. And oh my gosh, if you look at the map, I've only done a small portion? Oy, 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 oy. That's kind of crazy. I'm not sure what determines how I get life points. But I'm getting some, so. It says, greater diversity of species in an area results in a greater ecosystem health. Plants may contribute much more if the right plants are around them, but they may contribute less or nothing near others. Further, each plant and sessile organism has a life of its own and competes with others for space and resources, potentially driving them to extinction. A community, even of plants, is complicated and sometimes chaotic system is a complicated and chaotic system. Try planting another species. Way ahead of your game. Ooh, that one doesn't like that. It's red, why does it say red? Reduced nearby plant. Oh, isn't this one that likes the dark? Yeah. Oopsie. All right, so it's kind of like the plants are like taking on a life of their own. It seems like they're just doing their thing. Ecosystem health is now 16. As you increase the health of your ecosystem, you gain life points that you can spend to spawn new animal species and to unlock more species of plants via the research button directly beneath the flashing life point display. All right. So yeah, that's our life points. That's something research related. Interesting. I feel like I should keep adding some stuff. I've only done this tiny little portion of the map. I'm just gonna keep adding stuff real quick. Eee! It says it's time to evolve a creature. Already? And this? Let's see. Much like plants, animals need a minimum ecosystem health in order to spawn and improve the ecosystem health where they live. Each species makes a separate contribution, so the greater the species diversity in the area, the higher the health will be. That's kind of true for real life, too. Like, if I was going to go out and sample a stream, and I only found that there was, like, two species of fish, that's probably not a great sign. It means only, like, two things were tolerant enough to live there. Um, even if I found a lot of fish, but only one was really common, like, it was way more abundant than the others, that might not be good. So it kind of makes sense what they're saying. Let's see. Open the creature menu. Okay, cool. Look, there's couple different things. This first one says forager. It requires an ecosystem health of 15. These creatures occupy the central position in an aquatic ecosystem feeding at or near the base of the food chain. 
While it may seem simple, foraging requires learning the locations of foods and predators, understanding when things grow, and balancing risks and rewards. So what do I do? I just click it. It says insufficient life points. Oh. Is that requirement of ecosystem health 15 or 15 life points? I'm not quite sure. It still says insufficient life points. Oh, something happened. Something's happening. What's, what's happening? Did it make stuff? I see little things. What is that? What is that? What? Is that its face? Hold on, hold on. I love and hate this thing. What is that? Is it moving? Look, there's a bunch of little ones. That one kind of looks like a snail or something. What is this? Is that... I absolutely love this. What's happening? <laughs> Why does it look like that? What's going on? I'm fascinated. What's happening? I guess so. Maybe it's just throwing a bunch of <laughs> random shapes at out there to see what works and what doesn't. I'm blown away. What's going on? Did it just die? What? So there's like different colors, lots of weird shapes that are happening. Again, forgive me for trying to learn the mouse and all this stuff right now. It's all new to me. I can't even process what I'm seeing. I hope this one lives. Look at this one. Get it, friend. Ooh, it looks kind of like a ray. No, look, almost like a mola mola, like a big sunfish. It's got the big fin up top and behind. Get it, friend. Get it. Look at it. He's moving. I'm fascinated. I see them like fading. I'm assuming when they fade, that means that they're <laughs> they're dying. Look at him. He looks like a refined gentleman. He's even smiling. Oh my god. Cool. Alright, I should probably like focus on what the tutorial is saying. I'm just blown away by what's happening. Can I spawn more things? It says insufficient life points. Oh, new species are growing here. There's something going on on the side. I don't know what these words are. Hold on. I should follow the tutorial and stop like freaking out on my own. Okay, new creatures have completely random body shapes and nervous systems that cause them to flail around wildly, as we might have guessed. Creatures who manage to move a little get to have more children, and over time, evolution will make their descendants into talented swimmers. That makes sense to me. So, basically all it's saying is that right now, um, the shapes that allow them to move are allowing them to be more fit for their environment, right? They're getting to actually eat food, they're selective about what they're doing, and those who aren't able to move as effectively are probably getting outcompeted, and those are the ones that are gonna, we're gonna see die. You can kind of see where they are on the map. I see a whole bunch just hanging out here in the open water. Look at these things. So notice that it's really like these dynamic shapes with fins that are allowing them to move within the water column. Those are the ones that are being the most successful, it appears. This one appears to be dying out, whatever this red one is. It just died right in front of me. Okay, keep going, keep going. I'm so excited. The first few generations feed on nutrients in the water, but eventually they'll become larger and switch to eating food, be placed, or smaller creatures. You can cycle through creatures by clicking on a species names that appear in the legend below the mini-map. Oh! What? So it gives each species its own name? <gasps> Why do they keep dying? Did I do something wrong? Hold on. Oh my god, stop dying, please. My habitat's not, like, built for handling all this. I need to go down closer. I can't even see the ground anymore. Try interacting with an existing creature. Open the interact menu. This dude looks like a pair of pants. Let's go. Okay. I have a creature. This is my dude. Okay. What do I do with him? You can cull a creature you don't like by pressing the cull button. That means kill. And click on it. I don't want that. 
You can boost a creature you do like, feeding it and providing it with many offspring by pressing the boost button and clicking on the creature that you want to aid. Try culling or boosting a creature now. Okay. Boosted. Boosted. What does that do? It just gives it lots of little babies. Oh, look! Look at all the little babies that just popped up. Oh my god. I'm fascinated. There's a little smiley face. Oh my goodness. What's happening? They're all dying. Boosted. 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 Sweet. What about these things? Boosted. 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 Oh, I sh it cost me life points. I should have probably paid attention. Look! Oh my gosh. What are you? Dead, apparently. Okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I wanted. How do I stop boosting them? I just want to touch one so I can look at it. What is it? Wow. Interesting. There's like two little populations. If you look, there's the blue, which are the Garesco, and then the red, which are the Skaboga. Whatever that means. I think these are both the same species they're just different colorations so maybe it'll see which coloration works best this white coloration probably works really well in this open water where there's a lot of light because they probably blend in um, and this green coloration probably works best where there's plants I'm just curious if the game is like that if it will actually come up with different populations based on coloration and things like that I hope so that would be fascinating so next thing in the tutorial, it says it's also possible to mold the landscape. Open the terrain menu. Okay, now what? Oh, there's lots of different things here. Raised terrain is selected, as is the stone terrain type. You can also replace soil, smooth the landscape, or dig. Dig. Isn't that other plant that we have one that likes the dark? Oh, shoot. Ooh, can we make like a little cave? I don't know what I'm doing. Fascinating. Let's make a little cave system. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I am doing something good or not. Maybe I should go back up. Dig a hole, dig a hole. Diggy, diggy, dig a hole. That's cool. I like this. Oh my gosh. I can see myself spending just hours designing ecosystems. Alright, so we have a hole. How do we do plants again? Hold on. Yeah, this plant likes the dark, right? Look, and now it's not red. Well, it is kind of red. Hold on. It's getting better, though. Oh, I have 56 life points. That's good. I'm just like planting all these things in here and hoping that if it's dark enough, maybe those new plants will grow. That's pretty sweet. So we can dig holes. What else can we do? This one says raise terrain. bunch of grass, I guess. Ooh! What? I can make a big rock structure. Uh, that's neat. <laughs> I'm sure there's people who are, like, actually good at this kind of thing and can make this, like, all look good. Not I, but some people. So yeah, you can make a really diverse habitat, and I wonder if that also influences organisms, too. You know, like, having more diversity is probably a good thing and will affect maybe like how organisms generate I'm just speaking out of my butt here I have no clue and we're still only working in this little tiny area of the map we haven't even made a whole ecosystem yet we've just made whatever this is I'm fascinated there's so much here I feel 
like that's that obligatory thing I have to say. <laughs> As you might have guessed from watching this, I'm not an artist, so I'm gonna dig another hole before I move on in this tutorial. I know you're probably like, please stop. It's just neat. You can make it like a little trench. That's fascinating to me. What is this one? Replace, smooth. Oh. That's cool. I mean, I, I probably should like read up on this before I just start like destroying the habitat I just made. Let's keep going. Look at him. Get it, friend. Get it. Terrain affects life in several ways. Oh, duh. Soil type affects where plants grow and the coloration of camouflage creatures. It does matter. Okay, cool. Raising or lowering altitude exposes plants to different amounts of sunlight, and creating dark spaces may provide a place for predators to lurk. Outcroppings and inclines may affect the flow of water. So it does actually matter how you build the terrain. I love that. I love that it's... I was gonna say so complicated, but look at that guy. What is that? He's so flat. You big flat freak. <laughs> currents. Okay. Water currents transport seeds, eggs, and plankton around the environment. Forests will follow where water flow takes them. You can create current by so <laughs> Don't touch me, please. <laughs> Stop. You can create current by selecting draw current and clicking and dragging on the terrain. I'm fascinated. Draw current. It says it takes plants to like new areas, so should I draw the current away? Like, you know what I mean? What does that do? Do you think current also affects the organisms? Like they have to learn to swim in a stronger current? Ooh, it liked that. Okay. So I guess like I should draw some currents like out and away. Some things are doing well with the currents and other things look like they're dying. Maybe the current's too much for some, but it's good for others. Oh, look, the plants are spreading. So we have accomplished what we were kind of hoping for. By drawing a current, it looks like some of the plants are moving out. Okay, cool. Maybe that's how we can like get this whole map done. We don't have to like go plant stuff everywhere. We can just draw water currents. fascinating. What is this one? Remove current. Okay, okay. So I'm just kind of going around right now and I don't know if it's even helpful. <laughs> Adding a current out to where I don't have like a lot of plants or anything um, and hoping that it will cause them to grow. So remember, these plants do vegetative propagation, at least some of the ones that I planted, which means that if a piece of them breaks off and then like the current carries it somewhere, theoretically it'll grow new plants. I think that's what we're seeing here is little seeds and stuff shoot out. Let's kind of watch closely and see if we see something happen. I'm seeing stuff. See that? What is that? Could those be the seeds or the parts of the plant that are breaking off? This game is more in depth than I thought it was going to be. Can we draw a current up? Can we make a tornado? I shouldn't do that. Let's keep going. What now? What now? You can design a creature and let it loose in the environment. Open the creature menu and press the creator button. No way. Oh my god. I can design this thing? Why does it look like this already? Oh, this is fascinating. How do I do it? Teach me. There's a lot of things on the screen. Click on a body part to select it. In size mode, dragging the axes will resize the part. In move mode, dragging the part or point will move the part. And in rotate, it will rotate the part. So, oh, ooh, you can make it really thin. Look, it's like an eel. And then, 
Oh, this is like the width. Each part's kind of different. That's interesting. Rotate. Oh, God. <laughs> it looks so terrible. I'm sorry for making you so ugly, my friend. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know how to do this. How do you change its head? Hold on. Oh! Oh! What? I'm fascinated. Okay. Oh my gosh, yes, please. Let's give it like an eel-like head. I really want to try to make <laughs> an actual fish at some point, like a real fish, not just whatever this is. On the edit menu, you can add a new limb with the plus button or delete the selected part with the minus button. Oh, how do I straighten this thing? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay. It's got one. That's a start. You can delete. Uh oh, uh oh. What have I done? There. We got rid of that weird thing. <laughs> you can mirror a limb to duplicate it on the opposite of the creature by pressing. Oh, look, now it's got two fins. Okay, you can make dependent copies and independent and then paste it elsewhere. How so? All right. Dependent copy, independent copy. Paste. That didn't work. Maybe you have to have more than one body part in order to like paste. You can't just put a bunch of things on here now. I'm not quite sure. I don't know how to like uh, add more fins. Hold on. Mirroring a part or pasting a dependent copy will link the clone to the original so that the neutral structure motion and even future mutations will be shared. This is the most common use case. Pasting an independent copy will duplicate the shape, but the clone has different neurons, movements, and mutations. I want to know how to add more fins. What's repetition mean? Eh. You can adjust its skin, head, and food source and mating strategy. Okay. I'm not done with the fins, though. Teach me how to do that first. Oh well, I'm sure we'll figure it out as we go. Oh well, let's just give it two to start with. Should I make them like really wide? Mm, just really long, maybe. <laughs> I wish I could give you more, but that's what you get, my guy. Okay, we can change the skin, it says. Oh, interesting. Patterns you can change. I'm not sure that I'm really seeing a whole bunch of difference, but. Okay, I get it. Fin lines. So if you follow like the little color bar, you can see what it's kind of doing to the uh, the organism, which is cool. Maybe we should make it like a dark green so it blends in, right? It said like color mattered, didn't it? I don't know if any of these things actually matter. I'm just like... <laughs> Testing it out. All right, 
right, well, you know what? You look like you're ready to just go. He looks good, right? <laughs> I'm going to leave it as is. I want to just see what happens. When you're done editing, press the check mark button. Okay. Oh, we get to even name it. Dumb boy. And you can take a picture. That's fascinating. Click anywhere to spawn dumb boy. It can also be accessed from the database in the future. That's cool that you can make your own. I guess you could then make your own to see what works and what doesn't. Where's my dumb boy at? Dumb boy, where are you? Oh, it's so small. <laughs> Maybe they get larger over time. There he is. There's my boy. <laughs> my beautiful baby boy. Can they even move? Have I made things that can't move? Oh god. I accidentally gave it two fins up top. Uh oh. Mine are just gonna die. They're getting bigger. Come on, guy. Come on. What have I created? Oh, jeez. Something that nature... <laughs> They're just dying. They can't even move. Look, it's trying. It's like... Uh, uh. I'm sorry I created you. Oh, no. That one's moving. Maybe this is the process here, too. Maybe Dumboy will change and adapt. This one's got it going on. Look. Smart. There's got to be a way to give, like, fins on the side so that they don't just suffer like I just made. <laughs> oh, look, there's already different types of dumb boys. Okay. So, yeah, so even the ones that you create begin to kind of mutate on their own. And those mutations will allow them to be successful. Like, this one seems to be moving and doing pretty good. And here's another variation of that, I guess. Wow, I'm fascinated. There's so much stuff in this game that I really wasn't expecting. I didn't think it would be this, this complicated, but it is. Mature creatures spend half their time searching for food and the other half looking for mates. Different species adopt different mating strategies, pairing up to be mutually compatible, promiscuously seeking out the most attractive partner or gathering in mass at a central mating ground. Wow, look at all this. Your ecosystem can support multiple trophic levels beyond just plant life and herbivores. Predators eat other creatures to survive. You can spawn a batch of predators by clicking the creature menu and selecting predator. So now it will make a new creature who exists to eat the other creatures. And I feel like I shouldn't make too many if their job is to eat the other creatures. How are we going to know what the predators look like versus like regular things? You can even make an apex predator, it says. Oh, but I have to have an ecosystem of 45, I think, for that. Look, are these our little predators? What? <laughs> you are the predator? I uh, wouldn't have taken you for one, but... You know, I'm not going to judge till I see you in action. Maybe it's just like before, it's got to figure out what works best and that'll be the predator that sticks around i think it's just cool how it generates all these different shapes it's really fascinating to me and i wonder if it's different each time too like do you get completely random things based on what you submitted you know that's everything you need to know so it says let's just watch for a minute and see if something exciting happens something new. Oh, look! You can actually, they each have a name. It says Charlene, growing. No way. Each one has a name? Casey. Oh, my dumb boys. He just died. They just died. Oh, God. Glenny. Barbara. Bill, mating with Terry. I love it. This is really cool. 
These ones are kind of new. They look almost a little bit like a shark to me. Ooh. I don't like how it moves, though. I'm just blown away. I really am. I think I'm going to have to spend some time probably, like, learning all these things and how to craft a better ecosystem that doesn't produce a bunch of whatever these are. And maybe if I have some time, what I would like to do now that I know that you can make your own fish is try to make fish based on what I remember they look like and my horrible apparent editing skills and release those and see how they do. So stay tuned. I'm sure I'll have a bunch more of this kind of stuff. <laughs> but thanks for watching. This is a cool game that you should check out if you're really into like world building and stuff. Hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.